everyone, welcome back to my channel. Since we are in the middle of winter, I know it's really cold around here, I thought this would be the perfect time to share some books about hibernation. Now, on my channel, I've been sharing more books, picture books, that you can use in subjects all across the curriculum. We've been talking about books to use in science, social studies, writing, social emotional learning, and yes, reading. I think that it's so important to use read alouds as much as possible in the classroom. Not only is it an amazing way to boost your students' comprehension, but it also builds that engagement. By using picture books, whether fiction or nonfiction, students really start to build their background knowledge on the topic that you are teaching them about. So today, we're talking about books to use in science to talk about hibernation. Let's jump into those books. This first book would be perfect for young students. It is more of a silly, fun book than actually one that gives a lot of information about hibernation. This one is called Hibernation Station and it's written by Michelle Meadows. In this story, the creatures on the train are starting to settle in for their long nap. But with a passenger list that includes bears, hedgehogs, chipmunks, snakes, groundhogs, frogs, turtles, bats, and more, will the train ever quiet down so that everybody can get to sleep? You'll have to read Hibernation Station with your students to find out. Again, this is a fun, silly story that kind of introduces the topic of hibernation and what it means to hibernate and which animals do hibernate. So this is a fun one for younger students. Another book that I have about hibernation is a book that's part of one of my favorite series. This is the Over and Under series by Kate Messner. This one is called Over and Under the Snow. This one takes readers on a cross-country ski trip through the woods to discover the secret world of the animals living underneath the snow. Over the snow, the world is hushed and white. Under the snow lies a secret world of squirrels and snow hares and bears and bullfrogs and many other animals making their home under the winter snow. This nonfiction book reveals that tunnels and caves formed beneath the snow but over the ground, where many types of animals live through the winter, safe and warm, awake and busy, but hidden beneath the snow. The one drawback of these books is they do tend to be a little bit longer, so prepare for that when you're sharing it with your students. Um, it might be a little bit more difficult for younger students to sit through or plan to break up the story because it is a longer book, but it provides wonderful information in an engaging way that students will be able to really take information away from it. And it's a great book to add to your science curriculum. Another book that I have about hibernation is a fiction book. This one is called Time to Sleep by Denise Fleming. This is another fiction book, but kind of addresses the concept or the topic of hibernation for students and will really get their minds engaged. There's a chill in the air and Bear knows it's time for her winter nap. But first she must tell Snail, and Snail must tell Skunk, and Skunk must tell Turtle. And each animal who tries to put off their sleep just a little longer sees, smells, hears, tastes the signs of that impending season. Finally, Ladybug rushes off to tell Bear but she's already asleep in her cave. This is a sweet story about animals settling down for their long winter's nap, but maybe pushing it off as much as possible, kind of like kids do when it's time to go to sleep at night. There might, they might be able to pick up on that connection there and see that the animals are doing the same thing in this story. Now I have another nonfiction book. This one is called Animals in Winter. And this is by Henrietta Bancroft. This one introduces students to basic science ideas as you start to talk about animals and the different seasons. You can prompt students by asking, have you ever seen a butterfly in the snow? The answer is probably not. Butterflies can't survive cold winters. So in that, when it starts to get cold, they migrate to warmer places. Woodchucks don't like the cold weather either, but they don't migrate, they hibernate. They sleep in their dens all winter long. 
how do these and other animals handle the cold of weather? Read the story with your class to find out. And Animals in Winter also gives ideas for students to help animals that are hungry when it is cold out. And this book really talks about hibernation and migration, so it's not just the focus on hibernation. And help students understand why animals do what they do in the wintertime and the different ways that they take care of themselves when the weather turns really cold. Animals in Winter is a great book to add to your science curriculum to talk about hibernation. Next, we have another fiction book by a wonderful author, The Snowy Nap by Jan Brett. Hedgie tries really hard to stay awake so that he doesn't miss out on all the fun that his friends are having. There's a chill in the air and as Hedgie is trundling around the farm, his friends are telling him about all the wintertime fun that he's going to miss out on. He's not going to see the pond turn to slippery ice or Lisa make snowmen or the icicles on the chicken coop. This all sounds so amazing to Hedgie that he decides to stay awake instead of hibernating in his burrow. Then a snowstorm starts. Hedgy isn't prepared for the winter time, but luckily Lisa finds him and brings him to her home. So Hedgy gets to experience how amazing winter is from the comfort of a warm house. A cozy, fun story about winter time and talking about hibernation with your students. Another hibernation book that I have is from a well-loved character. This one is Bear Snores On by Carmo Wilson and if you've ever read any of Carmen Wilson's books about bear, you know how wonderful they are. And they, a lot of them can be used about talking about friendship as well. But we'll be talking about hibernation in this episode. In this story, one by one, different animals find their way out of the cold winter and into bear's cave to warm up. And even after the tea has been brewed and the popcorn has been popped, bear still snores on. With your class, you'll have to see what happens when Bear finally wakes up and realizes that there's a whole party going on in his cave around him. And the last story I have is also about a bear. This one is Bear Has a Story to Tell by Philip Steed. In this story, Bear has a story to tell. So he finds his friend Mouse and is ready to tell him, but Mouse is busy gathering seeds and doesn't have time to listen to a story. Then Bear sees his friend Duck, but Duck doesn't have time either because he's preparing to fly south for the winter. Maybe his friend Toad will listen to his story, but Toad is looking for a warm place to live for the winter time. By the time that Bear's helped all of his friends get ready, get prepared for winter, will anybody be awake to hear his story? You'll have to read it with your students to find out. This is a great book to share with your students about hibernation, and as you read it, you can create an anchor chart with them that really that shows the different ways that animals prepare for winter. Are they gathering food? Are they hibernating? Where are they hibernating? And then use the sticky note discussion questions that I have. I'll leave all of this linked in the description box down below the whole lesson to go along with this story about hibernation. But included our discussion questions. So as you go through the story with students, you can point out the different ways that the animals are preparing for the cold weather. You can have that discussion with them. Why are they gathering food? Why might they be sleeping? What are different ways that they get ready for winter? And then to go along with that, I would fill in the blank worksheet to see what students have picked up from the story and what they've remembered about hibernation. And then they'll be able to create their own hibernation map of sorts. This craftivity allows them to cut out the different animals and draw where the animals are hibernating and how they're getting ready for winter. And then lastly, use the task cards that are included to see how much students remember about what the different animals do. And you can really bring to life the story and help them remember what those animals are doing to get ready for those long, cold winter months. So picture books can really help students understand what animals do during those cold winter months. And it will help answer those questions that they have. Why do animals hibernate? Do all animals hibernate? What do they do to prepare for winter? Picture books are such a great way to share this information with students and to build that engagement as you are starting a unit 
on these different science topics. I will leave the resource and all of the books linked in the description box down below so that you can grab them and use them when you are ready to teach this topic in your science classroom. If this video was helpful for you, please make sure you give it a thumbs up, hit that red subscribe button because I'll be back next week with more picture books that you can use in your classroom right away. Have a great week.